Today we're going to talk about adding integers. If we look back, you'll notice that you have been adding positive numbers plus positive numbers for some time now. You know that 3 plus 5 equals 8. 4 plus 12 equals 16. So a positive plus a positive always is going to equal a positive number. So, yeah, like I said, you've been doing this for a long time now. Now, let's talk about when we add a negative plus a negative. All right, now this is something different for you. If we added negative 3 plus negative 5, negative 3, look at this as owing somebody $3, and you owe another person $5, so altogether you would owe eight dollars. Negative three plus negative five is negative eight. If you owed somebody four dollars and you owed someone twelve dollars, you would owe sixteen dollars altogether. If you were playing football and you lost two yards on a play, that would be minus two, and you lost six yards on a play, altogether you would have lost eight yards. That would be represented by your integer negative eight. Now, pretty simply, if you look at this, all you really did was add your integers and you still had a negative answer. So, just like positive plus positive is positive, a negative plus a negative number is always going to equal a negative. So all you really do here is add and they're going to be positive. What you're doing with the numbers here, you're just adding them and they're always going to be negative. All right. Now, it gets a little more complicated when we start adding positive plus a negative or negative plus a positive. So let's take a look at adding 5 plus negative 3, all right? You might not realize it, but there really is this imaginary 0 plus this expression, all right? We just don't write this, but it helps us as far as understanding these problems when we use the number line, all right? So when we're doing these problems, we are really always starting at zero on the number line. So what this means first is we are starting at zero. So uh, this is just imaginary. You don't have to write it, but I do want to place it there just so you realize we're starting at zero. So if I have a positive five, that means I'm really going to five on the number line. All right. So here I am at five. I added 5. When I add positive numbers, we're going to the right. Now I'm going to add negative 3. So if I add negative 3, that means I have to go 3 places to the left on the number line. I'm going to the left, and that would bring me to positive 2. So 5 plus negative 3 equals a positive 2. Now, let's look over here. If we just reverse our terms and put the negative 3 first and then add 5, will that change the outcome? Well, let's try it on a number line and see. So again, I'm going to put my imaginary 0 plus here in front of the expression. Let's draw our number line and see what happens. So let's put our 0. So I'm starting at 0. So in this expression, I am subtracting 3, or this is really a negative 3, so I'm going 1, 2, or I'm adding negative 3. So adding negative 3, I'm going to the left here. Now I'm adding positive 5 next, so that means I've got to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And where do I wind up if I'm adding positive 5 after that? Here I am right back at 2. So it doesn't matter which term comes first. If you'll remember, the commutative property states that order does not matter when you're adding 
uh, integers or whole numbers, all right, or any number. Let's go ahead and try another one. Let's say we have 1 plus negative 4. Again, I'm going to add my imaginary 0 plus in front. And let's go ahead and draw a number line. And here is our 0. So starting at 0, I'm adding 1. So plus 1, I'm moving to the right. If I'm adding a negative 4, I'm going to the left. I'm going towards my negative. So here I am. I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, adding negative 4. So I'm going this way. And where do I wind up? I am down at negative 3. All right. Let me wipe that out. That pen mark made that look like a division sign. And that's not true. Oh, this was plus negative 4. All right, let's go ahead and reverse our terms just to double check. If I have negative 4 plus 1, do I really end up with negative 3? Let's check on our number line. So here's our 0. We're going to start at 0. This time I'm going to the left first, 4. So this is plus negative 4. Here I am down at negative 4. Now I'm going to add 1. So I'm going to go one space here, plus 1. And where do I wind up? At negative 3. So whether you're adding a positive or a negative and a positive, there is going to be a shortcut. So let's go ahead and write that down. So positive plus a negative or negative plus a positive. The order won't matter. All right. So what we're going to do here, first we're just going to ignore the signs, whether they're positive or negative. All right. Then we're going to subtract the smaller number. And then we're going to take the sign of the larger number. So let's give it a shot here and show you what this really means. So if I have negative 8 plus 3, what I'm first going to do is ignore the signs. I don't care whether they're negative or positive. I'm just going to subtract the smaller number from the larger number. 8 minus 3 is 5. 8 is larger than 3. And this is negative, so the sign is negative. If I have 5 plus negative 4, ignore the signs. 5 minus 4 is just 1. All right. And 5 is positive. It's larger than 4. So my answer is just a positive 1. If I have 12 plus negative 16, ignoring the signs and subtract, 16 minus 12 is 4. 16 larger than 12. Your 16 is negative. So this would be negative 4. If I have negative 20 plus 2, I would do 20 minus 2. That would be 18. 20 is larger than 2. My 20 is negative, so that means this would be negative. And let's do one last one. If I have 15 plus negative 4, 15 minus 4 is 11. My larger number, 15, is positive, so the answer stays positive. Thanks for checking in. I hope this helped.